Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we are gathered together for worship this morning on this third Sunday of Advent. This is truly a joyous and wondrous day for us to be gathered together. And I welcome all of you who have come and gathered both here in the sanctuary as well as those of you joining us online as together we lift our hearts and minds and voices in praise on this particular Sunday of Lessons and Carols led by our Unity Choir and our guest musicians. Thank you very much for joining us and leading us in worship today. A special word of welcome to guests and visitors who are with us. It is always a great joy for us to share our worship of God together with you. Hope everyone will take time to sign the friendship pads that are found on one end of the pew or the other. It's a chance for us to have a record of all who've come and gathered for worship, as well as a chance for you to share a word of greeting by name with one another following the service today. Guests and visitors, please include a name and address or email, phone number, some way that we might just share our appreciation and our thanksgiving for your being with us today. This is the third Sunday of Advent, and we will be lighting the Advent wreath in just a moment. Um, our tradition here at Unity is for several of our newer families and members to, to join us in lighting the Advent wreath, and today we're grateful for the Newmans. Thank you very much for doing that with us today. As this is a Lessons and Carol service, we want to invite all of the children, if they are headed to uh, Children in Worship or Nursery, first grade and under, to make their way through the narthex following, uh, in the midst of the first hymn, that they'll be able to make their way to their particular parts of worship today as well. Today we will be receiving the Christmas Joy offering as a part of our regular offering. There's information in the bulletin about that. Deadline for the Youth Spring Beach Retreat is today, and also the Christmas Memorials and Honorarium Booklet is available in the Narthex. I hope that you'll pick up one of those. Looking ahead this week, Lunch Bunch meets on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday evening, we have our God With Us, a Blue Christmas service. Hope you'll come and join us for that special time together. Next Sunday is Christmas Eve, and we'll be gathered together for worship at 8.45 for a regular traditional fourth Sunday of Advent service. Our 11 a.m. service is the family-friendly service full of energy and excitement and participation, so I hope that you will all be a part of that service together. Four o'clock and six o'clock, also family friendly, but they're just lessons and carols and special music and candlelight and communion services. <laughs> and then we will have, once again, an 11 p.m. service with candlelight as well. So I hope that you'll come and join us next Sunday for one or more of those Christmas Eve services. We're also recruiting into the new year, new small groups, as we have an opportunity for an all-church read of this particular book, Between the Listening and the Telling, How God's uh, Stories Can Save Us. It's a marvelous opportunity that we'll have a chance to read and discuss together, so I draw your attention to that announcement as well. In addition to the Unity Post, as well as Tartan items being on sale today. But this truly is a unique and wonderful opportunity that we might worship God together this morning. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we light the Advent wreath. Jesus says, I am coming soon. Amen. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy. Advent means coming. Today we light the first candle as a sign of hope the second candle as a sign of peace, and we light the third candle as a sign of the coming of Christ. The third candle is the joy candle. Our joy is in God and in his son, Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. The world says worry, and we say rejoice. The news says fear, and we say rejoice. The world says, be happy, and the, the church says, be faithful. As we light our third Advent candle, 
We pray that our stories might be filled with hope, peace, and joy as Christ draws near. Let us pray. God of Bathsheba, Tamar, Ruth, and Rahab, God of David and Abraham, God of the angels' songs, God of all generations, send us messengers of hope, peace, and joy, telling all the world of the wonders we have seen and the good news we have heard. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. As we begin our worship today, let us say together, Let, let us, us walk, walk in the, the light of, of the Lord. Lord.
A reading from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of the Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious.
The second lesson from the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus.
third lesson from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and was greeted by Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who burst the leave that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He's brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her and they rejoiced with her.
for the fourth lesson, I will be reading Luke chapter 2, 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinarus was the governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house in the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he, he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
The fifth lesson, Luke chapter 2, through verses 8 through 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing the good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah of the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was an angel and multitude in the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed of what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen it had been told to them.
I invite you to stand as you're able that we might begin to respond to God's word to us with our responsive affirmation of faith. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. You may be seen. As the Magi brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to celebrate the birth of Christ, whether we give as the plates are passed or online or through the mail, let us now bring our gifts before God.
Let us pray. We bring these gifts, O God, in gratitude for the greatest gift of all, Christ the Lord, born in a manger. Bless these gifts and bless us, that together we might join the angel's song to share the news of Christ's birth. Amen. Friends, as you leave this place, may you go knowing that from generation to generation, we have been claimed and loved. From generation to generation, God has been by our side. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday and the God of tomorrow knows you by name, loves you, and calls you forth saying, go, be the person you are called to be. Love wildly, do justice, and come back soon. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to be seated today for the congregational and choral response and also for the postlude. <laughs> 